Today's video is part two of pricing financial futures. Make sure you check out part one first to understand how our basic formula for pricing futures works. And in that video, I try to explain the intuition behind the formula. So rather than me just telling you a formula, which you can obviously just Google, um, I try to walk you through why it makes sense. Um, if you're new to derivatives, take a look at my other videos explaining what derivatives are, what futures are, so on and so forth. Um, do subscribe to the channel as well. I'm constantly putting up more finance videos with the goal of taking finance students from a beginner level all the way through to an advanced level of understanding. These videos are all based on my book, which is called Trading and Pricing Financial Derivatives and it's available on Amazon.com so if you're really interested in the topic it might be worth taking a look at that. Um, it's also available in lots of libraries so I'll put a link uh, in the description below to Amazon.com and you can check it out if you want to. Okay so let's dig into today's topic which is pricing futures exceptions to the basic futures pricing formula. So in a perfect market the relationships between futures and the spot price or the price of the underlying depends 100% on the formula which is showing on your screen right now and I explained that in the last video. I also explained in the last video that there are some real world issues um, such as transaction costs, different borrowing and lending rates, uh, restrictions on short selling and so on that will prevent perfect arbitrage. Thus, the futures price varies within arbitrage boundaries around the theoretical price. In certain cases, we need to make some small modifications to the basic formula in order to take things into account. Things like storage costs, dividends, foreign currencies, that sort of thing. When the underlying has a cash flow associated with it, we need to take this into account in our formula. The cash flow might be an interest rate on a bond or a dividend on a stock, uh, accumulated dividends on an index, things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the letter Q to denote the percentage cash flow on the underlying asset. And the formula can then just be modified into the following formula. F0, or the fair value of our future, or forward right now, at time zero. Whenever we've got a zero, it's at time zero, which means right now. So F0 equals S0, which is the price of the underlying right now at time zero, times E, which is Euler's number that we covered in the last video, to the R minus Q. Interest rate, R is interest rate, less cash flow as a percentage to the T, which is the time remaining until expiration. So as you can see, we just needed to make a small modification to our formula in order to price a future or a forward that has a cash flow associated with it. Next, let's look at how we deal with storage costs. Some underlyings have storage costs associated with them. This is often the case with physical commodities, things like oil or gold. If you buy physical gold as an investment, you usually don't just keep it in a pile in your apartment. Um, your friends might be lovely people, but there is a risk that when you invite them around for dinner, every time you leave the room, they're going to fill their pockets up with your, your pile of gold coins. And so usually what you're going to do is you're going to, to pay some sort of a fee to store it. Equally with things like oil, you know, your, your neighbors would complain because you've got a thousand barrels of crude oil stored in a shed in your back garden. And so, once again, when you own crude oil as an investment, you usually will have to pay some sort of a storage cost. And when there is a cost like this, a known cost, we need to obviously take this into account when pricing our futures. So, you can hopefully already guess how we're going to deal with this because a storage cost is a lot like the cash flow that we spoke about a moment ago but rather than being a positive cash flow it's a negative cash flow it's a cost rather than an interest amount that you're earning and so where u is the percentage storage cost on an underlying the formula is f0 or the fair value of our future or forward right now at time zero 
equals S0, or the price of the underlying, also known as the spot price, in the market right now at time 0, times E, which is Euler's number, to the R plus U, interest rate plus storage costs, as a percentage, to the T, which is the time remaining until expiration. So next up, how do we find the fair value of a foreign currency future? When we're dealing with foreign currencies, there are two interest rates that we're looking at. There's the local interest rate, or the domestic interest rate, as it's often called, and then there's the foreign currency interest rate. Luckily, we're able to work around this quite easily with, once again, a small modification to our original formula. The formula for foreign currency futures is F0, which is the fair value of our future right now at time zero, equals S0, or the price of the underlying in the market right now at time zero, times E, which is Euler's number, to the R minus RF, which is local interest rate minus the foreign currency interest rate, to the T, which is the time remaining until the contract expires. So, all of those formula hopefully make sense to you. In our next video we're going to look at convenience yield, um, but we'll, we'll have a separate video for that. Um, you will need a financial calculator to calculate all of the above formulas and a lot of the formulas that we'll cover in other videos. I've put links in the description below to the two that are used on the CFA exams, as a lot of people like to use those ones. They're both quite similar, so do read the Amazon reviews before you decide which one appeals to you. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Please hit the like button below, tell your friends who are interested in these videos, and make sure that you subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. Also, please do comment below. Let me know uh, about you, about why you find these videos interesting. And let me know if there's any other financial topics that you'd like me to cover. I plan on making lots of these videos. Anyhow, have a great day. See you again soon. Bye.